It's showtime. Hello, everybody. And welcome to g -Quat Traditions, where good friends become family, and family is everything. So I know there's a delay. So I expect that you guys will be coming in out of the heat at any minute. Hope you're having a good day. Finally got warm in Connecticut. People can grow sweet potatoes and stuff that the rest of the country was growing. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I will see if I can pull myself up. Well, in the chat, G Mama grows. Hello. And thank you for coming. I appreciate you, Cheryl Faulkner. I was watching you yesterday, but I think I tuned in just as you guys were hanging up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Boy, is it hot in Connecticut. Why, why, oh, because I didn't click them. That's why my comments aren't showing up over there. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Let me see if I can. Oh, oh, keep touching. This is a Mac book. The Macs don't, you can't touch the screen. That's actually why I bought it. I don't like the monitors that are all greasy. Hello, Miss Patty. Thank you for coming and welcome. I saw you walking this morning on my TV. I clicked it. I didn't get you back to say hello and leave a comment. Robin Murphy, thank you for coming. My Renaissance grandma. So, everybody, I'm so excited. It's warm out. I I have asthma, so I'm not whining or complaining, but I have an excuse to go out early in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, do what I have to do, and then duck everybody for the rest of the day. I have a new gardening friend in the community garden, and after I came home from my 8 o'clock appointment, dental appointment today. I went to water my garden and it was already watered for me. Hello, Barb Brownlee. Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you've got those five machines out, Barb Brownlee. We've got some stuff to do. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to tag you on this postcard thing we're doing, the fabric postcards. So... I have my phone today. It's not hidden under anything. I'll wait a few more minutes. I have so much to show you guys. I'm so excited. So excited. So what's the weather? What's the weather like? Uh, my sister, Joanne, Steve, you're all my sisters and, and nephews and nieces. I don't think any nephews are in yet, but they they will be. They're probably out manning it up. And I thought I saw somebody else come in. Okay, sissy. So that means R Uncle Roscoe is there too, because I have a special project today that the men folks are going to like. I have on my T-shirt today. It says, "I am a reinvention rebel." What a reinvention rebel is, is a woman over between 50 and 90 who has reinvented themselves. I was a guest speaker at an event here in New Haven for the International Festival of Arts and Ideas. For those of you who are new or in the bushes, the regular subscribers already know about that. And this is the second t-shirt I got. I have always been a reinvention rebel. I'm always inventing something or making something different. I just love it. I'm different. I'm different. 94 in Georgia, it's the same here. It's the same here. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But, now, and it's going to be warm like all next week. We have weather alerts. It might even get to be a hundred and something here in Connecticut. They had they said that 
more than half of all the calls to um, the emergency numbers are from homeless people. It's so sad. They have cooling centers now for people to get off the street and out of the sun. Oh, speaking of which, I got some fabrics down. One of you subscribers asked me to show some more fabrics. Um, these are these are some of my specialty fabrics that I put aside. There are basically hi Cece's Texas Garden. There oh Cece says it's a hundred and two. Whoa, whoa! I saw you out there planting Cece, and oh I forgot what I was going to tell you. Oh I was getting some fabrics out because my specialty fabrics. There are two kinds of quilts. There are, why is this on over here? I don't know, but I, can you guys see me? Am I loud and clear? I'm concerned now because I don't remember seeing this other little logo over there. If you guys, you must, you can hear me because you're answering and responding. So I was getting some fabric down and I had this hat that was given to me and it's really heavy. And I was like, who makes a straw hat? And it's handmade, hand woven. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's a really, really, really nice straw hat. I never wore it because I sweat when I'm outside and I didn't want to get like sweat rings all around it. Cece said, yes, she's inside, but I, I get it. This straw is thick like this so that it can keep the heat off of a person's head. And it really, really would. G Mama Gross says she can see and hear me well. So let's talk about some exciting things. I will move this because... I went to Wally, oh, Wally World to, this week, and a box of these accidentally fell in my cart because they Auntie Joanne gave me all that leather, so now I can finish a lot of journals that I have started. And I should have gotten more because I wanted to tell you guys who are interested in making journals that... They're on sale for 50 cents each. They always go on sale for 50 cents around uh, school time. So I always go, I'm leaning over because the doctor tells me I need rotator cuff surgery, but I'm not doing it. I am not, 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 not doing it. A nice haul. A few other things fell in the cart, which I will share. So this week... Oh, I was telling you about the two different types of basic types of quilt. There are utility quilts, which are the ones that you use every day you put on your bed. Then there are art quilts and show quilts. Well, most of the quilts you make are utility quilts on whatever level because you make them to use. I make some quilts that I never use. I just keep them for shows like when I... I, I enter competitions or if I'm asked to display like at different museums or whatnot and I put my things and yes. Yeah, so I was going through some paperwork and I found this. This is the last show. It says the vintage view quilt show capital quilters guild and long Carolina long arm association. And this was a big quilt show, you guys. This, this, oh, you can see it says it has over 400 quilts, 40 vendors, classes, demonstrations, boutiques, wearable art, door prizes, and exhibits. Well, Auntie Ellen uh, not only was first vice president of the Carolina Long Arm Association, I was one of the judges in this show. And I was co-chair of the vendor committee. So myself and one other person were in charge of all of the vendors in the show. 
Hola, hermana Lorraine. How are you doing? I bet you were, you, you wish you were in Connecticut now. It is, no, you don't. It's hot here too. It's hot here as well. Then I, I was going through stuff, organizing it. And the, after that, I must have just moved back to Connecticut because here's a 2015 membership to the Studio Art Quilt Associates. I am, well, it says I'm in the Virginia, North Carolina region, but I transferred it back to uh, Connecticut. They have quilt shows and different exhibits based on the area of the country that you live in. So what else am I going to get next? Something that fell in my Amazon cart accidentally, accidentally. And uh, Gina, Gina was saying that, uh, talking about the needles being hard to, hard to thread. So I bought two packs so that I don't run out. I'm getting ready to, to do a couple of projects. One is on my lap right now. And these are called denim needles for those of you who have sewing machines. And it's for sewing several layers of denim and it's a size 16 needle. Oh, Miss, Miss Patty said she had rotator cuff issues and went to therapy. I've, I've had the therapy and I, and I take therapy every day when you're out walking, that's what I'm doing every morning. I get up at, no, I wake up early, like three, four, five o'clock, but at six o'clock I start doing my physical therapy exercises at home and outside. And sometimes I go to the gym. Hello, Tina, my sister in New Orleans. Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. So if any of you want some heavy duty needles, I actually got these on Amazon. The, these, these don't break easily and they're very easy, easy to thread. So I have some show and tell. A couple of months ago, I was showing you guys some blocks that were stripes and I cut them up and sewed them. This is the same exact block, but sewn together differently to make different patterns. If I were going to make a quilt, I would make more than one block. But what I'm going to do with this, I made this into a casserole pad or you can use it for canning um, when you're canning and i wanted to suggest that if you make blocks or you have orphan blocks when you quilt that this is something you can use it for then some of you saw hola rudy irahita welcome 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 so i had some fabric with chickens on it and I know a lot of you have chickens and I had some Native American fabric that I loved. So I made a couple of table runners, placemats or casserole pads. I actually use them when I take things out of the oven. And then it's the same fabric, but cut out with a different view with different roosters showing. So these are some of the things I do in my spare time. Barb Brownlee says she loves those quill blocks. I, I used to have chickens. I miss that. Uh, my chickens used to follow me all over the place. These are barred rocks. This looks like a Rhode Island red. There are, there are lots of different ones. And I had some like almost wild chickens. Oh, and the, and the silkies. But my favorite were the Buff Orpingtons. They're big, golden, golden chickens. So do you guys want to see some fabric, some, some imported fabric that I have for the specialty quilts I was talking about? Um, 755 Media asked me to uh, show, to show some more fabrics because I want to show you guys that these are small pieces of fabric but you can make the most beautiful things 
with the smallest pieces, you know, including this. This is my um, lead goat, Lilac's Bell. That's why I put a lilac. This is actually a key fob, but it was just a strip of fabric that I had left after making something else. And it's just like five inches wide by, by 14 inches. So do you guys want to see some fabric? Or you want to see the rest of what I bought this week? Or which do you want to see first? Oh, hi, Maria Graham. Thank you for coming and welcome, welcome, welcome. I appreciate you. I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate the people in the bushes. I appreciate the people who give the thumbs up. I appreciate the subscribers. I appreciate the members my new members, I have a membership now. It's $1.99 a month. And I will be using that to give advance notice for when I have sales or other things. My Renaissance grandma wants to see what accidentally fell in my cart. And hands in the dirt, thank you for coming and welcome. Well, this didn't fall in my cart. This was a gift from my sister, Joanne Stevens, but I took everything out of it. There was absolutely nothing in it. But now that I am making these postcards, this seems to be a keeper that you guys want me to keep on doing. And I'm going to show you so many other ways of doing it. And so I made this. You guys can use like just a regular plastic container even the one like this one, you probably won't need one this big from the buck and a quarter store, but I keep different things for different projects. I have so many things going on at the same time that I like to keep them organized. So this is what the inside of this container that Auntie Joanne gave me. So I filled it up with some things that I will be using for postcards. And by the way, we're going to today upcycle some old jeans and make a, I'm going to upcycle them into postcards. I made a new pressing mat. I want the rest of you guys to get one of these by Saturday. What this is, is a fabric board. You know, when you buy fabric in the stores, at the end of it, they usually have a brown, a brown cardboard then get one of those and either some batting or an old towel. And I'll show you how to make a portable ironing board so that you don't get this glue and sticky stuff on your good ironing board that you iron your church clothes on. This one just happens to be a little nicer because it had cone of fabric. I bought the, a, a bolt of it. That's what I buy my black, the jet jet black. And that was what that one looks like. So what I put in, and what you can put in your cart, Irritabe Gardens, thank you for coming, Diversity Love. I'm excited to show you guys what I have in here so that you can make a kit for your postcards. I actually have a list of postcard supplies. And what I have in here, I have fabric scraps, scrap batting, printer paper, scrapbook paper, rulers, cutting mat, rotary color, cutter or scissors, glue stick, um, and some other directions. I put a glue stick in here. Yes, you can use any type of glue that you want, not only for the postcards, but for anything, because use what you have. That's what I want to encourage you. Some places are off grid, other countries, you can't get anything. If you can't get like, for example, unbleached muslin to make your po uh, your postcards with, just get, this is a regular index card. This one is actually from Amazon, but you can get a pack of 100 for a buck and a quarter at the buck and a quarter store. I put a couple of clips in it, a pair of dollar store glasses, why? <laughs> because sometimes when I go to class uh, or I teach classes, arts and crafts, somebody always forgets their glasses. And lately I've been teaching classes to seniors. So almost everybody, except Mike's Chaotic Gardening, 
over over the age of 40 wears glasses. But this is what I especially bought with some of my little YouTube money and contributions that you guys have given me. You know how I always say, don't use your good scissors for cutting paper and other things. And then you see me pick up my scissors and cut plastic, other stuff. Well, this is what I want to suggest and what I have when I teach classes. This is a, a beginner sewing kit. You get them at Wally World and they're only $10. All of the other um, fabric shops, all the other trade stores, they have them. And this has everything in it. But what I really got them for is because the, the scissors, the big scissors in here, you won't see me using my really sharp Ginger scissors anymore because I finally got a pair of strong, sharp scissors for cheap. And I will be using those. This has a seam ripper. A little small ruler. This is good for postcards. A little tape measure, some safety pins, a couple of pencils. And this kit does come with, I call them suicide pins, the type of straight pins that your grandmother used to use. And uh, with a metal head, don't use those because they get caught in things. You can't find them and they'll stab you or one of the kids. It also comes with a thimble. I took their thimble out. I don't know who could use that big old thimble. I have, I wore a size seven and a half ring and you put the thimble on your middle finger, by the way. But uh, the one that came in the kit was even too big for my fingers. So this one is a little brass one and I like the way it feels. It's, it's antique and I used it and it has a lot of different needles. But I wanna encourage anybody who doesn't have a sewing kit to get one of these. You can't beat this price. You can't beat that price. And thanks to you guys, I finally, Mrs. Cheapskate, bought one. And so this is dedicated to this kit that's just for postcards. These are some old scraps of fabric I have that are cut up. I call them crumbs. I have some pieces of ribbon. Sissy, Joanne Stevens, do you remember when you and mommy went somewhere and found all this ribbon on sale? It must have been 10 years ago. I still have some of it, and I'm going to use it to decorate uh, postcards because it looks like a couple of people have taken a challenge. Anybody who makes a postcard, a fabric postcard, and mails it to me, I will make one of mine and mail it back to you. And I will autograph it and sign it. And this is, for some of you, the difference between an art postcard and one, just a regular one. I worked on this one some this week. It's actually going to be a birthday card for my grandson's birthday um, in September. But were all these little pieces of fabric or sewn together kind of like a crazy quilt, Joanne Stevens. You were asking me about crazy quilts. This is how I will start on the bottom. And I will put other embroidery and fancy stitches on the top. This one will take a little bit. Then there was this little thing in here. And this little kit that Joanne Stevens gave me. So in here, I have my rotary cutter. But what I wanted to show you is that this rotary cutter is from the buck and a quarter store you can't beat that you can always buy a higher higher premium blades why would you buy that because they're sharper and they last longer and but this one i'm just going to keep dedicated to postcards then they have this little thing you can use it for finger pressing or for those of you who make postcards and you decide to use the card you can use this as a way to put a hole in it to sew it and make it easier. So I just put this in this little case, or guess what? What does it look like? It looks like an eyeglass case. So guess what? You can get an eyeglass case at the book and a quarter store. And this little cutting mat, your postcards are four inches by six inches. 
this is the perfect size. I'm just going to leave it in here so it will always be together when I'm working on postcards. So, you know, when you see me throwing things every which way, I won't have to look for it. When I want to whip up a quick little postcard for something, all of it will be in my little kit. Oh, Eritabe says that's a beautiful card. Thank you. I'll, I'll let you see it when, it when it's finished. I'm going to put buttons on it and shells and beads. And for those of you who are new, yes, you can make fabric postcards. I will show you at the end. Uh, yes, G Mama goes, this one is, is fancy. And I just wanted to show you, you can make them as simple or as fancy as you want. The first one I made last week just to show you was just a piece of fabric that was fussy cut of some corn. I wanted you to get the basics of how you can make one sewing by hand. You don't need a sewing machine. And I wanted to show you just the basics. What I would do if I were sending it out to one of you, I would have sewn a button in the middle of the corn. I would have tied a little bow, one of those little ribbons, something to van fancy it up. Oh, Maria, this is my, I am a reinvention rebel. For those of you who have come in after I started, this is a group. It's actually a podcast where it talks about a bunch of women who are from 50 to 90 who have reinvented themselves. A couple of weeks ago, I was one of the guest speakers for the International Festival of Arts and Ideas here in Connecticut. And this is one of the t-shirts that I was gifted. And the other lady wrote a book. Her name is Lisa Franco, and she's an antique dealer. She went to an antique store one day, and she found a little container that somebody had brought there. You know how people pass away in the family. They just want to clean the house out, get the house sold, or move in, whatever they're doing. And they don't even look at things. They just dump it off. Well, she looked in this little container and inside this container were like 150 love letters from a gentleman that was in the military writing to his future wife, you know, my dearly beloved. And you read the book. She actually gifted me a copy of the book and you will just boo-hoo, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. So I think you guys wanted to see the fabrics next so it took me a while to get this down because I have, <laughs> there's a room that I don't even work in. It's supposed to be my craft room. It's eight by 12, but it's filled from ceiling to floor with bookcases and things on it. You see the tops of some of them. You see some of my, um, mahogany wood carvings or ebony wood but i don't know if you can see this basket how can a basket it's hand hand woven uh in south africa hello tori's brain thank you for coming and welcome mike's chaotic gardening thank you for coming so this basket was hand hand woven and hand carried from south africa from one of my friends who's who was native from there and he gifted me this basket and he's a a designer for a, a, a sweater designer and he gave me a whole bunch of fabrics that he hand carried from south africa now i have some other things uh this is a piece that my daughter gave me, it was hand pieced somewhere and it was so, ex I guess, expensive. It's, it has a security tag. It, it is heavy, CC. It's heavy. It's all, all hand beaded. She asked me, mom, did you use it yet? No, I didn't use it yet. I'm trying to think of something special, but this is what I mean about your little bits and pieces that you put aside and you save. This is just some heavy fabric that I guess I was going 
to put to make some bags. I'm getting down to the African fabrics, but this is just, I like animal prints and this is folded so that um, it would fit in the basket neatly. Oh, I want to tell you guys something. Do you know how to measure without a yardstick? Does anybody in here know? One of my friends is Native American and she taught me how to do it. I don't have anything that's a yard long, but that's out right now. But you take a piece of fabric and you hold it and you hold it out the, the length of your arm to your nose. And that's a yard of fabric. That's how you measure fabric. And when I go places like to big sales or whatever, and you want to buy a lot, a lot of fabrics, that's um, how you measure. These are some more like embroidered handmade fabrics because I want to show you that that fabrics are not just for women. They're, they're heavy, they're rugged, and you can make nice things. These would make some nice, nice totes. These are because I keep my, my animal prints separately. This is another piece of embossed designer fabric that one of the designers gave me. Uh, they knew that I was a quilter and they didn't use it like for different collections. So they gifted me, these were actually like samples, but some of the samples that you buy, like if you go to upholstery stores now, you used to get them on the big cards, your grandmother, everybody had them. They don't give them to you free anymore. You have to, you have to pay for them and they have the tag on it and whatnot. So I, I didn't pick these out. Other people picked them out for me, but these are beautiful. This is another piece of imported fabric. This would make a beautiful, beautiful tote of some type. Now, now I'm getting almost down to the gifted African fabrics. I just want you guys to see what to collect. Like you go into an upholstery store and they have those old scraps by the door in the books. I have taken those books and brought them home and had to get my brothers and nephews and everybody else help me get those staples out and take them apart so that I can keep them. Some of them were silks. Look how pretty this is up close with um, the embroidery. I mean, the way it's woven. Okay, one more piece of animal print. Then, have any of you heard of Shui Shui? You spell it, I think, S-C-H-W-E. Uh, two times. And... It's a type of fabric that was made in South Africa. And when the Dutch, when the Dutch were in charge of the country and nobody else could make, make any fabrics. So I want to show you what it is. I have a small pile of these. I'll show them to you individually because they're, they're really special. They're like geometric, geometric. A prince this is a this one is this must have been a yard that he gave me yep this was a yard but it's 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 just a, a small width and hello B family vibes thank you for coming and welcome and what I wanted to show you is that this fabric is totally authentic and so special I don't know if you can see each piece of shui shui is stamped by the government. Like here, how we stamp our meat, even though it doesn't mean anything, you don't know what the heck you are eating. Um, this, this fabric is all stamped. So it's very special to me. So I keep it in a special place. This is not shui shui, but it was a piece of um, imported fabric that my friend gave me along with this basket for my birthday a couple of years ago. 
he's actually an international chef and invited my daughter and I out to his house in New Jersey. And he chefed the whole meal. You know, there were, I think, two other people where you have the private chef and they give you each meal. There were about like 20 different, 20 different um, things that we ate. And then this bottle of $200 bottle of wine afterwards, a journal cover. Yeah, they would, but this, this, this is awfully expensive. I have some mud cloth over there. Uh, and this, this is actually like fine fabric, fine fabric. And you can see the stamp a little better on this one. And like, it's, they're not like interesting bright colors, but I just wanted you to say, since you guys ask, hello, Tracy, passionately intrigued args. 755 Media asked me to show some more fabrics. So these are fabrics from hand carried from Johannesburg, South Africa, and gifted to me by a friend. This isn't shui shui, but I just loved it. You see where I cut one little piece out of it, and then I saved it. These are for my special my special projects. Uh, this is, oh, and this, you know what's different about this fabric? It's not, I'll show you some fabric that's the wax, you know, made with the wax print. And, uh, but this, this is woven. It's woven. Hi, eco neighbor. Thank you for coming. Annabelle must be lonely. Annabelle is his brand new, um, not bulldozer, tractor. And she's so pretty. She's red. This is another piece of fabric. Are you guys bored or you want me to, uh, this is shui shui, um, Aunt B, the fa fabric from the South African government that, or no, no, the Dutch, when they, the Dutch were in charge of South Africa and nobody could print any fabric independently like they can today. So this is a piece and these are pretty big pieces he gave me. They're not, they're not, they're not, they're not chinchy pieces. And I just love them. I just love them. I put my patchouli oil in it, make sure no bugs or anything gets in it. But the basket is just open on top of the bookcase. And I just keep this little bit of paper on it. And this, so if you guys ever see any fabric like this in your travels, on vacation, just uh, make sure that you get it and collect it. I see a lot of people traveling and I always want to say, did you get anything? It could be a, the size of a postcard, a half of a postcard. I just love, love, love fabrics. We're going to go from here to some old jeans that we're going to up upcycle today. Oh, it's 4.38. Okay. So I'm going to show you two more pieces. I have more fabrics, uh, bits and pieces. Now this one is red. And well, the guy gifted me all this fabric. So I made him a one of a kind quilt out of these fabrics. You want to get bulk fa fabric from Africa? I have a place that you can get bulk uh, fabric from Africa, Diversity Love. Um, go to Quilt Africa Fabrics. They're on Facebook. They're also on YouTube. And you can tell her that Auntie Ellen uh, to, told you, and uh, she ships it. I have my, most of my fabrics shipped directly from Africa and I get the, um, hello, Black Guns and Garden. Thank you. The Yankee sister will tell you that I, I usually get the whole six yard piece because when I put my, uh, my things in quilt shows, I don't want anybody to have anything 
like mine in the show. Okay, one, two more last pieces. These are a couple pieces that are hand sewn, hand beaded, uh, hand everything, one of a kind. And these were gifted to me by my daughter. She knows I haven't made anything with them yet. Now, what I want to show you, did you guys like that? So we still have time to do a project where we're upcycling and I can barely still pick this basket up. Still has a lot more fabrics. I'll show you some more on Friday. These are my African and really, really, really super special, special, special fabrics that I don't want to get accidentally cut up or when the kids and everything are here or, or not, not my kids, but other people's kids or classes or the seniors and stuff. I take things down and sometimes they get mixed up. Hello, Miss Shirley. OG. How are you doing? My sister. Thanks for sending that 93 degree heat over here. I'm dying. So this was a jean dress. Mike and you guys who, don't who think sewing is not for men it's not true i didn't have i do have a lot of jeans old jeans but i'm cutting them up to make a quilt this was a floor length dress it's already cut up in pieces these were the pockets the front and the back i'm glad i'm a thick thick size 14 wearing lady because i had a plenty of fabric in that dress to make to make these projects. And then it was uh, dressed down to the floor, but it had nice little splits in it. I cut on both sides, I, I cut those off. And we're going to make postcards out of them. Right now, right now, right now, right now, because you don't have to have fabric and I want to encourage you to use what you have. Everybody has a pair of old holy jeans Although nobody stops stops using their old jeans anymore. Temperatures 100 degrees, Barb Brownlee says. She watered the garden and fruits early. Dropped more collard seeds. Harvested lettuce. I'm glad to see everybody growing. Oh, you know what's so sad? My new neighbor in the community garden has these figs. I have one fig tree and it's it's been abused by me. But... Um, he had so many figs on his tree. I see them all in the, in the in walkways where the uh, eco sees nothing wrong with thick, much respect. This took a lot of good groceries to get this. And, you know, a uh, true fact in some countries in the world, being fat is a status symbol. I'm not fat. I'm just thick. I'm not thick. I am. I am going to do some machining right now, Auntie Bev with some of this jean fabric some of this jean fabric i've already got it cut up and just so that you know you see these parts because you'll see them again these are strips from the dresses from the dress a seam i'm not throwing this away this is actually going to be a clasp on a bag at some point you see this then you put it over a button these are going to be handles to a bag this was the hem of the dress. I want to emphasize to use what you have and that you can use anything. Don't throw anything away, especially, especially old jeans. Okay, so let's go slowly so that I don't make you guys dizzy. And the sewing machine is right here. And for those of you, I don't have any of those fancy graphic like Tori's brain. I just wanted to show you, I appreciate each and every one of you. And I thank you. So out of that same dress, ta-da, I made an ironing board out of denim it's a piece of heavy cardboard 
I put two layers of batting on it and it's not even finished sewn yet. I can do that later, but I want to show you a postcard, a quickie little postcard. And it won't be, it'll just be different. It's going to be made out of jeans. So now I'm opening my little kit over here and I'm taking out some pieces that I have already cut. Oh, one thing I want to tell you guys, this is the very first postcard that we made by hand, it's fabric. But what I want to show you, let me get this little tiny, I, I found these pens that write kind of thin and I like them. So, It's a, it's a point liner, but what I want to show you is that on the postcard, I have, I have labels that I can sew on little tiny personal labels, but you can put on yours made by Ellen. Thank you. So when you make your postcards and you send them out, you have your own little label. This is just a sample that, that I made. For those of you who haven't seen the fabric postcards, and what you do is when you mail them, you can put them in a plastic sleeve, a plastic sleeve, for those of you who are new. Uh, this is one we made last week. I sat here and I sewed some, some strips together. I put some unbleached muslin on the side, zigzagged around the edge. And then if I were going to mail this and I didn't want the wanted to get messed up after all this work and I wanted the person to keep it. If you wanted them to be able to reuse it or use it again, you would put it in another envelope, but you would want to get it postmarked just for, you know, just for like a historical document. And then you put your label on the outside. Hello, Martika. Thank you for coming and welcome. Cece, I don't know if I said hi. Darth X. Dandy mom. Hello to anybody that I might have missed. Did I see? Uh oh, it jumped. It said something Jones. But I appreciate each, each and every one of you. So now we're going to make a postcard. And I've pre-cut some batting. I have pre-cut some stabilizer. Wrong size. So a postcard is four inches by six inches. So today I'm making a macho man card for eco neighbor Mike Tori and the guys who are a little nervous about sewing. I'm making one just for you guys to send out on holidays, birthdays, whatever. So, oh, this is, this is one that we made just out of one piece of fabric. Actually, here's the top. And it was hand sewn. You see where it was hand sewn all around the edges, just with a needle and thread. And 
except for you got a super chat, Auntie. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. I didn't see the super chat. I'm so busy having fun with you guys. But thank you. And I appreciate each and every one of you. Boy, I'm way away from the bottom of the chat. Thank you. Thank you. And so this little postcard, the same thing. We're not going to sew a label on it. We're just going to sign it. Made by Ellen Panky. In case I ever become super famous, you'll have something that was by Auntie Ellen. Okay, so now I'm going to plug the big iron in. I have it right here. I'm not going to use a little one because you have to hold it for five seconds. And the big iron will heat it all at one time. One second, please. Whoa. I'm trying not to fall over here. Okay. So now, the exciting part, I'm going to move these out of the way because Actually, I will hold these up. The same dress that I just showed you that I cut up, I made all of these six by four inch pieces. You see the, you see, I would say the jeans. This is, a, this is actually a, <laughs> the Auntie Bess that I'm famous, YouTube fa famous. And even the seam, you use the whole thing. It doesn't matter. Like when you're cutting up jeans to make a quilt, or make a piece of, this is what they call functional art. So these are some of the pieces that I cut out of that, that, that dress, just a piece of it. You're going to see how many, how many, many, many things I made. I made. So while the iron is heating up, I'm going to move these. And look, this was like a pair of old pants fabric, like corduroy. I made them a dark color for the guys that don't want flowers or anything. Do you hear me, Michael? Michael's chaotic gardening. Thank you, Eco Neighbor, for the super chat. Thank you, Maria Graham, for telling me who sent it. She will see it later. <laughs> you know, mothers and grandmothers are nosy. They're peeping at everything at everything. So I have these pieces that are, are dark and jeans. So just for the heck of it, let's make a postcard out of old recycled denim because I want to show you, show you how, how you can do it without a lot of fuss and bother. So you may not be able to see it because it, I hear my neighbors outside my door because it's denim on top of denim, but we're going to I have some cute little fabric here that I'm going to fussy cut. And I'm sure Mr. Stacy will see why I have this fabric. It's one of the fabrics that I love and save. Why? Because it has wine on it. Isn't he the king of wine down Wednesdays? So I'm going to take, let me find one that says, I think these are bottles of wine I'm looking at it. They say fish oil. I guess they used them for other things. Well, we're going to use them anyway. We are going to use them anyway. 
Oh, here's a little section. It says caviar. And fish oil. What I'm doing is just cutting, fussy cutting a little piece of this. Actually, I think that little bird is cute. So I'll leave him there. And I'm going to do a little better job. Oh, I said I wasn't going to use these scissors, right? But it's okay. I'm using for fabric. So, maybe I'll move this for a minute so that you can at least see it. So, here is the postcard. Here is a little something something. Then, I want to show you two different treatments because this does not have... Hello, Teresa Bailey. Thank you for coming. This doesn't have, this is just fabric. So what am I going to do with this? When I'm, when I'm ready, I'm going to, when I'm ready, I'm going to just put a glue stick on it. This is a piece of fabric that I'm going to fussy cut. I'm going to cut out the word love. It says love, family, home, different things. Going to shut down. Thunder, getting close by. It's supposed to thunder here later on, too. Be safe. Thank you for coming, Teresa. So, let me get the scissors that I'm supposed to be cutting paper and stuff. The new ones I just got. So... I'm going to cut out the word love. Can you see this? So I'm going to put love. I'm, I'm going to show you two ways to to decorate or see this little sunflower. I know Psalm 146 likes sunflowers. I accidentally cut it a little bit, but I'm going to put that on there too. So I'm going to put this up here, this here, oops. Actually, I'll put it up here so you can see it better. I'll put that up there. Maybe put this there. Love. And... Just to show you another way, remember we were painting rocks, so I'm actually going to be working on two postcards at the same time. Oh, how about, oh, how about this little frog? <laughs> Mike's Chaotic Gardening, this frog is for you, sir. It's for you. So I'm going to put this frog, I'm going to make him fit over there and he wanted a mini quilt oh did he well this looks looks like it's going to be your order sir but for those of you who don't who who don't want to do this or fussy cut or deal with fabric guess what you can take your jeans um i bought some fabric pencils I have fabric paint. I bought these are acrylic markers that I was using for the for the rocks. I'm just gonna write on here and draw. 
How about that? So it'll be upside down for a minute. So I'm going to I don't know if you can see this. So I don't have to just cut them out. I can draw them. So we'll say we're putting a little circle. Sorry, I can't see the chat right now. So I'm drawing. A flower on here. This would normally have to to dry and maybe we'll make it just to put another color in but I'm just doing this to show you you can do anything you want anything you want you can use fabric you can use a combination of fabric and paper so you can use paint. You would have to let the paint dry. See, I just painted this little post flower and I could say, uh, you can see it. So these that don't have, these that do not have, oh, I put these cards because I'm going to put unbleached muslin on the front but you don't have to you can use those of you who are sewing by hand you can just use a, a index card cut it to size four by six use that as a stabilizer so these together boom there's your there's your card but let me cut this a little bit more so that i can get them to fit on the postcard Hello, Mr. Frog. Oh, these scissors are sharp. No more using my good ones for nonsense. Okay. Sissy, this is the last little piece I think I have of that ugly frog fabric. You guys, my sister took me to a store and there was some fabric on sale. She wouldn't let me buy it because she said it was creepy with the frogs. It was expensive fabric, though, and I loved it. So I got her to take me all the way back to the store the next day, and I bought all 15 yards of it. I made so many quilts. My great-grandson said, Nana, make me a quilt out of it so that my sisters don't use it. So, okay. We're going back to, this glue stick is dedicated to Mr. Frog here. So I'm going to put some glue on the back of him. The, the thing about using, for those of you who want to use, you can use Elmer's glue, whatever you want. But I'll tell you what, you have to let the glue dry before you put it on your sewing machine. Because if you do you're going to end up with a sticky mess. This one, I'm not putting a glue stick on. Why? Because I have already put the heat and bond double-sided fusible on it. If I can get it off. See how shiny it is? So all I have to do is heat that as well. You can use anything you want. Why? Oh, don't cover up Mr. Frog. You're supposed to love him. And I'm doing it two different ways just so that I can show you guys that to use what you have. If you got a glue stick, if you have heat and bond, if you have sewing things, if you want to get it, or just to start out. This is a great project to do with kids. Okay. So 
So this one, the sunflower, the sunflower also has the heat and bond. So all I have to do is pull the sticky stuff off of it. And I didn't cut it very well. But this is just fun. You know, we're not sending this one to the Louvre. We're not sending it to the Smithsonian Art Gallery. We're just having fun. You love the t -sh the shirt. Thank you. Thank you, E Eco Neighbor. I am a reinvention rebel. Okay. So now that I have... this postcard laid out. I'm going to put my half made new small cutting board right here because it fits. I just moved it because it's the same denim that we're working with and you won't be able to see it, but I'm going to put it down like this and I'm going to take the iron and heat it down the big iron that is so just so that your iron doesn't get all crappy you can use whatever you want i use parchment paper usually but i'm just showing you how to use whatever you have whatever you have don't go buy anything just try doing it with what you have right in the house right now it's so much fun so one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And you have to let it cool down a little bit in between. So while it's cooling down, I will move this stuff out of the way. And I will get, we will need a front. Well, actually, I call this the front of the postcard. I'm going to put it here so that you can see it. It's actually cooling right now. So now, that's cooling, and I'm taking a piece. This I just use for a pressing cloth, or you could use it for the stabilizer. You can use it for whatever you want. So I'm taking, this is a three-inch ruler. a three inch ruler. We don't need the ironing board over there anymore. And we're going to draw a line down the center. And we're going to put the three lines to mail it. This is a postcard. I just want to make sure that you guys can see. I think you gave you some. Need some more what, sissy? Okay, so... These are the lines to address our card to. And you can write on it with whatever. Hope this pen doesn't mess me up. But I'm gonna try to, I just wanted to make it different. So we're gonna write postcard, P-O-S-T. T C 
A R D. Then you're going to put your name on it here. Made by, and I'm using my real name, Helen Hanky. I have a friend who's a famous quilter. Her name is Bisa Butler. She uses her name. And I'm like, she can use her name. I can use mine. So now this is the back of what a postcard looks like. You would normally, when we finish with it, get it hand stamped. But we'll get to that in a minute. I want you to see this part. So now it's fused on what we're going to do is the part that auntie bev was talking about and are we going to make something today yes this will be finished in just uno momento and ready to go in the mail so where I've glued these on, I'm just going to do a little zigzag stitch on it. So on this machine, where's a zigzag stitch for? Why don't I turn it on first, right? Okay. So we're going to do... Zero, one, two, three, four. But just because I don't trust it, thank you. Thank you, Maria. I'm going to take this scrap of fabric. Oh, no, you didn't. So the presser foot came on. But it's okay. It's one that should be able to snap down. I just can't see it. Oops. Okay, let's try it again. There's a little bar down here that it snaps on. I don't know if you guys know that I'm totally blind in my left eye. And it makes your vision, your depth perception off. Okay. Just a minute, you guys. I'm going to try one more time to fit it on. Is that it? Well. Huh. Finally. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. That was frustrating. Okay, now I kept the black thread in. Because I never sew with black thread. This is a treat. Because I'm working on some special projects. So I just kept the black in. Okay, so there we have a little zigzag stitch. So if any of you have a machine that does any decorative stitches, you test it out. It was this little one here, or I should say here. And what I'm going to do is just sew around the edges of these little pieces that I put on so they won't come off. Are you guys enjoying this? 
Marie's crappy, scrappy creations. Thank you for coming, Marie. For those of you who don't know Marie's scrappy creations, your left eye doesn't affect my work or my A game. Do you understand what you mean in general? Yes. Yes. So Marie's scrappy creations, she does absolutely everything. Everything with scraps of fabric, a tiny scratch, not those big pieces that you just saw me out measuring with my my nose. And she does a great job. Now, see, if I had planned this a little better, I wouldn't have, I would have ended up, but I'm just going to do this a different way. I'm just going to keep going anyway. So I'm just zigzagging along the edge of the pieces that I just put down. A couple of them are done with a glue stick. Some are done with the heat and bond. Just so that I can give you give you a chance to see how you can do anything. And as Maria said, I, uh, for Marie's, Marie's scrappy creation, for as many people as you see making postcards, everybody does it a different way. There is no right or wrong way. Do whatever's comfortable for you. Take something you learn from me. Take something you learn from her. Take something you learn from anybody. It's like a recipe. You take what you like and leave the rest. Okay. So I'm just gonna mosey on over here. Just to keep the, the the zigzag going, and that's just to keep the the little applique that I'm putting on here. And it's this is going to be so cute, you guys. You can't say this is a wimpy card. You can't say it is. Mike's chaotic gardening eco neighbor Tori. You can't laugh and say this was this was a girl card. It's it's for anybody. Rudy, would you like to make some postcards? Rudy Irnahita, are you still here? I think this is a project like rock painting that's, um, you know, adaptable to most people. Or if you need some help, you can get some help. I thought I was going to need some help just now putting that first pressure foot back on. But I did it. We did it. We did it. So now... Oh, this is so cute, you guys. Let me cut this off. Look at this. Is this cute or what? Auntie Bev wanted to see from beginning to end. So guess what? Now, this is the front of a postcard. This is the back. So let's put it together. And... I have batting already cut out. You don't have to put batting in. Or thought I was going to have to cut another piece because I couldn't find the one. So what makes a quilt a quilt it's the fact that it's three layers a top batting and a bottom so this will be the um, front of the card and this will be the back let me just line them up So I normally make the front of the card a little bit bigger because when you're sewing on it, like when I was just zigzagging all that stuff, it ends up getting smaller than the four by six. But now I'm lining it up. 
and cutting it to size. So see, it's closed. <laughs> My sister makes sure that I don't leave it open. I have most of, most of my rotary cutters are ergonomic and they close by themselves. Okay. So we trim you. And we're going to trim you. And you always keep your fingers. Oh, sorry. You always keep your fingers four to six inches. I mean, you keep your fingers at least an inch away from the edge. So when I zigzag along the card, I know it's upside down. Oh, no, it's right side up for you. I'm going to go a little bit off the edge of the card so that it catches. As a matter of fact, I think... I will put a couple little clips on it. Marie, you wish you could say, oh, thank you so much for coming by, Marie. Thank you, thank you. And I did look at your video, and I had forgotten about this little part of signing your name on it there until I saw your video. And you guys, it was Marie's scrappy creation that reminded me that you can just handwrite it. You don't have to um, have any type of fancy label. So thank you for that, Marie. And I want to give credit where it is due. So I'm going to clip this just so that it doesn't slide. And this end. And then like two point in two minutes we will have a complete postcard, Ms. Auntie Bev Jones, from beginning to end. And aren't these great gifts? If I breathe, I might sew off the line. <laughs> and as I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is fun. Who would turn this card down? It is so cute. And it's not gimpy. And we upcycled a pair of old jeans. A pair of old jeans. So I'm back stitching a little bit just to hold it. And ta-da! The only thing left now is to trim it. You can trim it with scissors or a rotary cutter. So I will do it with. Rotary cutter. Uh, do you guys know that they're rotary cutters that have actually scalloping blades? Or like, like pinking shears? I actually think I will because I don't want this to shred. Oh, I can't wait to show you this, you guys in like a half a minute. So how many of you have a pair of old jeans, old pants? So look at this. How cute. Looks like I missed a little piece down here. Let me clip it. So you guys, 
Check this out. That's the back. That's the front. I see I missed. I'm going to go around again. Hello, Miss Robin Murphy. You're new to rotary cutters, Mike. Ten. How are you? The educated natural. You have to email me your address. I have your your packet you won last week right here. Right here. Mark Tika didn't pick hers up, so I guess she wants me to put it in the mail. I'll do either one. But here is a postcard. And again, after you do your work, you want your 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 creation to get where you're sending it. This one's not going to Tanzania because this has this frog on it. This frog is going to Indiana or somewhere like that. So what you would do is take this to the post office, have them hand cancel it. You have them hand cancel it. They're going to stamp it. And you're going to put it in the envelope. If you're sending it to somebody, I know I'm repeating for some of you. If you're sending it to somebody, you write, Dear Santa Claus, <laughs> please send me a winning lottery ticket. Okay. Love Ellen, Auntie Ellen. And then you put it in. But if you want to send it to somebody and have them mail it out, you put it in a plastic bag. I found out that these sandwich bags fit perfectly. They have special four by six inch sleeves that you can order on Amazon. But why? Why? So when I was in Wally World the other day, uh, one of their store brands accidentally fell in my cart. So I have 200 of them. Okay. So then you scotch tape it down. Put it in the mail. Too lotto for you, my what's hand cancel? Crafty Leo, it's when they have um a round stamp in their hand in the post office and they mash it down instead. You don't put a stamp on it. You don't put a stamp on it. They they have you don't put like a postage stamp on it. They have a round stamp, like a notary seal, but smaller, um, the black one, and they stamp it. And then you glue the back of it. And that's it. That's how you make a postcard, you guys. You can do it by hand. Diversity such a girl perfume card. You can. You can put perfume on it. But how cute is this? And you just take and I just cut out some fabrics that I had. Some fabrics that I have. Uh, you can put buttons on it. You can put shells on it. As long as they're not too big. As long as they're not too big. Crafty Leo, thank you for coming. And I expect to get a postcard from you. As a matter of fact, I'm tagging you because, because whoever sends me a, a, a handmade, when I say by hand, you can use a machine, but a fabric postcard, I will send you one of mine. Didn't Lady send perfume cards in the day? Yeah, when you were in prison, did you did you get any, Mike? <laughs> Another great live. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to tag um, African Dream, and April already is tagged. I'm tagging Maria Graham to make a postcard and send it to Auntie Gina. In fact, I'm deputizing all of you, all of you, a fully grown quote. Quoting Doris Day, K Sara Sara. I used to like that one, diversity love. And okay, you guys. Did any of you have any questions? Okay. So those of you who are here, if you get a board from a board from the sewing shop, you can make your own little board. The one I, I had last week. This, this one, oh my goodness, this one is real wool. I use it for my embroidery machine, but I didn't want to get glue on it. That one was crazy expensive. So I made one out of another piece of that same dress that I made the postcard out of. 
Yours is in the mail already, Penny. So Maria Graham is tagged. So I'll have to make you a purdy one. Auntie Bev Jones says that that it's fun. Okay, so this is fun. It's like painting rocks and ta-da. How cute is that? Mother, I hope you're watching. My baby brother came down from Boston today to see my mom. She's so happy. She's so happy. She's still in the hospital, you guys. So those of you who pray, please pray for her. And the others just sent her good wishes. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you for coming, everybody. Auntie Ellen, out. Peace and out. Oh, Tracy, you already know you're tagged. I'm looking for my postcards, you guys. Here we go. This thing is 